Hi folks, Eric here with uh, another Eric Hepperly Designs tutorial. Today I wanted to take you guys along with me as I go through my thought process and develop a JavaScript program using ES6, which stands for ECMAScript 6, or uh, Xmas, ECMAScript, sometimes it can be hard to say, uh, 2015, which is, I believe, the latest popular uh, JavaScript standard. And the best thing, if you don't know already, about ECMAScript 6, we'll just call it ES6 for now, on, is that it allows you to do what uh, most people, a lot of people use libraries like jQuery for without needing to import any libraries. In other words, it's got a lot easier syntax for selecting uh, complex selectors in, in, the, in your DOM traversal. So let's get to it. So what I want to do today is I want to go, I've got a website. And I, I basically, I want to determine what JavaScript pr plugins the website is using, okay? So this isn't my website. This is somebody else's website. So that I've gone in, and I'm looking at the, uh, you know, view source. Right-click and do view source, right? So I go over here, view page source, okay? That brings me to this page and you can see all the meta properties and whatnot and then if you do control F and you see I've already got it in there uh, use a bracket and then the word script if you don't do it that way if you just write script you'll end up getting all kinds of stuff about descriptions and, and you don't want that you just want to get uh, what starts with the script tag so that'll you hit enter you'll see uh, at the top here it tells you which one you're on and how many there are total. This says we are on one of 56, so that's not too bad. So there's 56 script tags in here. And we want to be able to go through these script tags and grab any time we see one of these source tags. That'll be a URL which will tell us where the actual script file is located. And from that, we should be able to pull some names. So, for instance, this is a WordPress site. We can tell uh, by this href here that it's using Jetpack CSS, so it's probably using a Jetpack plugin in the JavaScript also. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So that's the purpose today. We're going to go through and grab those. And I haven't built the code yet. I, I've got a framework for it that I designed. So here... In my code, I always put a, a sort of a, a comment header at the top that has the program name, which kind of is a, a plain English descriptor of what the program does. We, here we list script source links to identify plugins, and it's something that runs in the console. A file name is the actual file name, which also helps me track if I change. You know, sometimes I'll take a base file, and I'll use it as a template and copy it, and this is where I'll change the name for each file that I that I make. Or if I make a different version, see this is version 1, but if I make it version 1.01, then I'll change the file name accordingly. So the date this was created was today. Uh, anything that's done today doesn't count as modified, but anything after today, so if I modify it tomorrow, then I'll put 10.26.18 here. Uh, of course, my name, so that my name is always branded there. Uh, people know who wrote the code. And this, again, is another little plain English thing to describe simply what the purpose is, to scrape links from script tags and identify plugins using vanilla JavaScript. Now, I want to post this and upload it to GitHub. Um, the only challenge is I'll have to change the name. I give it descriptive names so that I can find it on my computer with my search program. But those names don't work as well uh, when you when you're uploading things to GitHub. So, but that's a topic for another time. We might make that a different video. So, 
and then I give you the usage in the browser console of any page. You know, you go in the browser console by doing F12, just like that. So I push F12, and then I push F12 again, and back in the browser console. Uh, copy paste the code below into the console. Pretty simple. All right. And so it requires nothing. This is where you would list any kind of libraries that it requires or if it needs to be on a specific page or anything. All it requires is that a browser console be opened. So in other words, that you have access to the internet. Uh, demonstrates uh, ES6, vanilla JavaScript. Um, I may use the spread operator if I do and um, for each, uh, but we'll do query selector all and definitely DOM traversal. So this right here is if I put it in JS hint, which is a linter for JavaScript that I really like. And this is the directive that tells it that we're using ES6. And this global isn't necessary anymore, but when I used to use uh, jQuery a lot, I would go ahead and throw that in there. The reason I found ES6 oh, coincidentally is because I realized that jQuery no longer worked in what I'm trying to do right here, making these little scrape scripts uh, because of cross-site scripting and uh, um, localhost origin policies and stuff like that that I've only just started to become aware of. So yeah, great that uh, security in the internet and tech world is getting better, but now it's more stuff. I mean, that's just how it is. You just got to constantly keep updated. But anyway, let's get back to the code. So I've got, um, I've got a JavaScript object, you know, with JSON notation uh, for selectors. This is just so that I can stay consistent. And when I copy this to make the next program, I've got that selectors part there. Um, eventually, I might make this into a class or something, but for now, it's just object. So our selectors, this is a tag selector. We're going to select script tags. Styles, this is common styles uh, for styling using the percent %c directive in uh, console.log. You might see some of that later. We might not use that. Like I say, I just import that in. I put that in all my, my code, and eventually I'm going to make a library where I won't have to repeat that in all my code, and I can just call the library. But for now, so we set those uh, object variables with those properties, and then we create, uh, we call a main function, and then main's down here, and here's what we're going to do in main. Now that we're getting to it. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and make a second video, so stay tuned for the next video. This video is going to be called um, Building the Framework for a Basic JavaScript uh, Scraping DOM Traversal Application. Thanks for watching.